Alright everyone, James here with JWN Lawn Care and Landscaping bringing you another cold start and review video. Um, so today, I'm doing my 5 hour initial review on my HRU216 M1 self propelled mower. Um, so, I don't know, I guess I'll just, just jump straight into it. Um, it's a very good mower, it's got power to it. Um, it will go through the thick stuff. Um, Leaves a nice clean cut. I haven't had to rake the deck yet um, for tall grass. Um, I just slow it down. Um, three speed. It's got the GXV160 5.5 horsepower engine. Um, so it's a very nice mower. Um, it's heavy. Um, it's I think 57 kilos. So when you try to lift it around turns, it's or you know, it's um got weight to it but it's um it's got the power with it as well. Um one lever height adjuster I do like that. Oop, and you can see we just went straight down. Um probably wasn't the best idea to do that while I was sitting on it. But yeah. So height adjuster here you've got plenty of different heights. I will leave it on one, two, three, four. Um position four I think it is. I just leave it on that for pretty much all my lawns. Some of the guys like it cut a little bit lower, so I um will put it down a notch for that, but normally four does fine. Um it's a molten catch mile, so obviously you've got your um, 70 litre, I believe. Dacro pressure bag. Um nice and big in there, as you can see it's a bit dusty. Um oh, um need to wash it out because basically with this if you can't see through the bag. Um, means the grass can't, or the air can't get through the bag, um, and that reduces its um, catching ability and all that kind of thing. It's got a mulch plug as well, so um, nice, good sized mulch plug and some crap that's in there. Um, that just locks in, locks in place, and I leave that place in my lawn, so. Um, I'm going to mulch this next lawn I've got, um, because that's what I normally do. Uh, it's only got one position for the handles, which is kind of like meh, because if you're a bit shorter, um, the handles are a little bit lower down than the maximum position on my HRX217, but um, if you're a bit shorter or a bit taller, you know, you can't really adjust them, whereas on the HRX you can. But at the same time, these handles are way, way more robust than the HRX. On the HRX, I can't jiggle around um, because they're obviously just little pins locking them in. Whereas with these ones, like, that's solid. So there's no, um, you know, stuffing around with it. Um, it's got the blade clutch system on it, so I'll show you that. Um, Hopefully you can see me. Yeah. So it's um it's got the system here, so you push down the button, forward, uh, kicks on the blades. Um, I like that because for some of my properties where I'm going, you know, I've got a bit of a way, it's a few streets away. Um, it's not it's too close for a car, but it's um, almost too far to walk, so I just leave the engine running, can't let that pull me along on idle. Um, and the blades don't run, which is great, which is one of the reasons I went with this mile as opposed to, say, a Rover um, with the engine brake. Um, I have put a zip tie on here, which I am, um, I've shown you in my previous video, which will be coming up after this video, um, because I haven't had time to edit it, and so I lost some footage, and yeah. Um, I also put a couple of zip ties around, so if I want to leave the blades running, I just move these up and they sit on there. Um, let's get the camera actually to show you. So, here's our system here. So, we've got our zip ties. I've got two of them. Um, this would be of extra strength. So, while I want to have the blades off, I just let this lift up. And uh, it can be in self drive mode now. It's fine. Um, while I want to engage the blades, push this button down. Take the lever forward. If I want to leave the blades engaged, uh, a bit easier. And whenever I push the lever forward, I don't have to push down that button. I just there you go. Um, that's great. And now I just leave these up. 
And essentially you now have a HRU216D mower. Um, but with the snorkel system and you know different catcher, different this, different that, yeah. Um clutch levers nice. Um yeah, that's good. Um Take this off. Um, this one chokes, so you've got your slow position, and then unlike the HRX with the GCV190 engine, where it was kind of like you you couldn't really run it in medium speed, um, it was just like either slow or fast. Um, with this one, you can I'll show you when I start it up. You can go all the way from idle. You can you know rev it up a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. All the way up to fast and choke, obviously, as well for starting. Um, one thing I've noticed, as mentioned in my other video, this doesn't really like when it's coldish, doesn't really like starting on anything apart from either choke or fast. Um, so it won't start on slow, it won't, you know, do any of that. Um, also, hates engaging the blades at slow speed. Um, so if you try and just do that with the blade clutch lever when it's running on idle, it will just die. Um, so you go, I can't have it like half. Ish throttle, bit more, three quarter maybe. Um, I try and engage the blades at like half because it puts less strain on the engine and on the um, clutch assembly. Um, it's the same thing with my ride on mower. You'll notice I always engage the blades like half throttle, um, if not less. Um, on walker mowers, say you're you're supposed to engage them at like idle, um, just because otherwise it puts a lot of strain on the belts and on the engine. Um, and then that wears everything out a lot quicker, and then people go moaning, oh, why is my belts, you know, worn out after a week? Well, maybe if you engage the blades at half throttle or idle, like you were supposed to, uh, they'd last longer. Um, one thing I don't like is the three-speed gearbox. I really hate that, because although, you know, three speeds is a bit more simple, um, my HRX 217 has nine speeds, and that thing flies along like a fighter jet. Like, this thing just kind of chugs along like grandpa walking speed in position three. And, you know, if you went up position four or five on the HRX, it would be, you'd be jogging behind it. Um, so this one, I can't move at like that speed, I guess. Maybe a little bit faster than position three. So that kind of sucks. But, you know, what can you do? Um... So yeah, as I mentioned in my HRX and HRU comparison video that I did a while back, I think there's some features on the HRX 217 that I see that should really be on this mower, and some on this mower that I think should be the other way around on the HRX. So things like the HRX's um, Versamo system, I think that should be on this. I think something like a Nexite deck option, not necessarily like only next site, but a next site option would be great on this mile, just because this, again, 57 kilos for lifting into, say, the back of the car. This is really, really heavy. Um, I think I've only managed to do it on my own once, and I really shouldn't. It really needs two people or a ramp. Um, it's the best option. I think there should be a, um, I think the nine speed, uh, um, clutch should be on this mower and the three speed on the HRX um, what else no, I think that'd probably be about it um, but yeah so some things that I really think shouldn't be on this mower um, so I see like a three speed versus a nine speed you'd almost think this would be the lower down one but in fact this is actually on the top model um, I do like the GXV160 engine we have here it's got lots of power lots of grunts um, big 1.5 litre fuel tank. I like the big air filter with the snorkel that goes up. That's an um, Australian only thing. So this is pretty much the HRC216 PDU, I believe, for Americans. Um, but without the um, single lever height adjuster and with a 9-speed clutch and without the snorkel, I think. Um, Um, one thing I really, really hate about this engine, though, is that it lacks power. Um, the GCV190, I mean, yes, I think it's 190cc versus 160 on this, but the, the GCV just has so much more grunt to it. It's like a two-stroke versus a four-stroke. It's like this thing's a two-stroke model with, you know, it, it spins fast, but it doesn't want to do much, versus a four-stroke, which spins slower, but it has a lot more torque in it. Um, even though this is supposed to be the more commercial and the more powerful engine, this has less torque in it, I find. 
than the GCV. It just won't... It will die just looking at long grass um, versus the HRX where I'd just leave it on position two like I normally would or two and a half, whatever it is. It would go through anything, um, pretty much whatever speed I put it at without stalling. Whereas this thing, you know, you need it on the lowest speed, highest deck height, and you just think, you know, and even then it still struggles. So that's something I really don't like about Honda. I think it's because of all this emissions control crap and everything that they reckon they need to make their mowers quieter and this and that and everything else. Like you look at the Australian Toro Grandstand, it literally runs at half throttle. That's the maximum you can give it, like half throttle. Versus in America, you can make them scream like a raped pig. But over here, um, does nothing. Um, I don't mind the mulch plug. Um, you can see it in there. So, um, that's not bad. I like the flap as well, because that car spreads out clippings evenly down here. You'll see it. Um, let's lift this up, actually. There it is. So, nice, decent side flap. One, one thing I don't like is, you know, so whenever I go to pull this mower back, say for while I'm turning in a three-pointing kind of turn, it goes underneath the mower. And then when I push forward, it eventually comes out again, but sometimes it doesn't, and so then that ends up stuffing it up and all this stuff. Um, yeah, so overall, a pretty good mower. Um, I've only used it five hours, as I said, it's got five down there, but um, it's done me well, it hasn't been too bad. I still like the HRX for my longer, thicker stuff because, as I said, it has more torque to it, um, and it just goes through everything better, whereas this one just kind of looks at it and dies. I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, another thing, the catcher. I think they really need to put the HRX um, 88 litre catcher on this mower. I don't know why you have a smaller catcher on a more commercial mower. Right, yes, I know I mulch a lot of my yards, but for the yards I don't mulch, it would be nice to have a bigger catcher. So I think they should take the HRX's 88 litre catcher bag and put it on this one and take the 70 litre catcher bag put it on the HRX. Um, yeah, so that's one of the things that baffles me with this mower. It's just like, so many things I see that I think should be on this mower or on the more residential model. And so many things that are on the more residential mower I see should be on this mower. Um, so that's something that annoys me. But anyways, um, let's do its first start for today. Again, cold start. Um, it hasn't been used since Friday, I don't think. I haven't used it since then. Um, cash is no good to me. Uh, full tap on. Um, by the way, again, this is with revs increased, so, um, revs have been put up, put down two notches, I think. So, um, you'll notice it's got a bit more power to it, but even with that, it's still not really enough, um, can you do, um, I mean, it's, Honda's crazy, they just don't want to listen to us, um, I don't know why, but they don't, let's put this over here actually, oop, sorry, alright, it gives that lovely fence, alright, so, we'll put it on choke, um, it's over there, this is a really, this is a one pull moment, guys. Um, it normally starts in one pull. Let's hope it does today. And it doesn't need like really hard yanking either. It's just smooth. It's just a nice smooth pull. Okay, fire straight up. Nice pull power. This is running in fast. Then we can slow it down. That's idle. So you notice, unlike the HRX where, where it's just pretty much either idle or fast, this one, you can go all the way up the spectrum. There's a little bit more. So that's normally where I'd engage the play, it's about here. So you can go all the way up. So yeah, that's something that's nice about it. Um, it's got a nice sound to it. Oh, some catches, you can see everything. Um, I didn't show you guys underneath the deck, I'll do that when I turn it off. 
Um, it's a little bit different to the HRX 217, but not too much so. Um, so, I don't know. I'm sure what the way sound like. So again, we're up about half. style you can just leave these here and um, not worry about the blade clutch then when you start it up again um, it's basically a um, D model and again as you can see this is trying to start it in idle um, with the speed in idle and it really doesn't want to play ball um, you know sound to it as I said um, does lack that power for tall stuff but it's pretty good I mean it's, you know it's all right um, just slow it down a bit maybe raise the deck a notch or two it should be fine um, one thing I forgot to mention is this mower um, it does although it doesn't like engaging at idle um, it will happily run and stop at idle. I can sometimes start it up at idle. Um, you know, I think that's just the lack of power, uh, torque in the engines. It just doesn't like doing that. I'll, uh, oh, I should, uh, I'll turn the car around and I'll um, move it over for you so you can see the um, underneath. Right. So you can see, this is the under the deck, I've cleaned it recently. Um, this is the clutch assembly here, the drive clutch. Um, so that's a nice little addition. I'll just put these up because otherwise you can't see it. Um, yeah, there we go. So this is your drive. Um, so when you're engaging the clutch, it engages through here. Um, blade clutch you can kind of see underneath there that's this disc here um, so if I go the blades lever up and uh, pull these over you'll see this clutch has now gone around that and when you disengage oh hello um, sorry. when you Disengage them. Pull that button back up. Um, it goes back up again. So that pretty much controls whether the blades can move or not. So at the moment, you'll notice they can't be moved. They they won't. Um, it's just immovable um, because that blade clutch 
has the brake on it, you can see here. Um, and that spring, can't really see. Oh yeah, there you go, in there. That um, controls the whole thing. Um, it's four swing back blades on this mower. Um, I need to sharpen them. Um, so what I like about these versus the bar blades you get on the um, HRX is um, these can, as, as you can see, hence the name, swing back. Um, if you hit a stone or a tree stump or something, these blades will just go chung, and they can go all the way back to there or all the way over here, depending on where you um, hit it. So if you hit something, these blades will just swing out of the way. Um, whereas with the HRX, you got to be really careful because if you hit something, it's just a bar blade, so it will just screw the blade over and there you're done. You can see the mulch plug here. There it is. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, that's the 216M1 guys. Um, it's a nice mower. Um, but yeah, as I said, there's things I reckon that are in this that could be in the HRX and things in the HRX that could be in this. Um, so I've got to go off and do a couple of lawns now. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. We'll see you in the next one.